ओके सो टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट वर्किंग ऑन यू नो सॉल्विंग सम न्यूमेरिकल्स रिलेटेड टू द एसी सिग्नल एंड रिकॉल दैट व्हाट आई वाज टेलिंग यू लास्ट टाइम दैट ऑल द मेथड्स ऑल द टेक्निक्स ऑल द थ्योरम्स व्हिच वी हैड स्टडीड इन केस ऑफ डीसी एनालिसिस द सेम थिंग विल वर्क आउट फॉर एसी एनालिसिस आल्सो सो देयर विल बी नो चेंजेस एक्चुअली सो वी हैव टू you know uh, apply same concepts same logics which we had studied in case of whatever we had studied earlier same thing will be applied in case of dc analysis so let us try to uh, you know uh, see only the changes which are uh, you know uh, relevant in case of uh, ac analysis and the main change which is uh, you know uh, here is the uh, terminology related to the resistances so in case of dc analysis uh, in case of dc analysis what we normally have is uh, you know resistances and correspondingly if you want to invert them and uh, what what they are called if we invert the resistance and what will be that called anyone conductance yes so it will be conductance okay and start the recording sir okay and then uh, the second thing uh, in case of ac analysis what we have is instead of resistances we call them as impedance and if we want to do a reciprocal of this impedance what is that called admittance okay admittance so so these are the terminologies which are uh, related to uh, case of ac analysis and uh, impedances are normally represented as zz omega so which actually clearly states that your impedances are or your resistance basically is varying with frequency here in this case your resistances are not varying with frequency and correspondingly the admittance is represented by yj omega which is actually nothing but inverse of gj uh, omega okay so with these things in mind uh, if i have you know uh, let us say this circuit in our hand which is a very simple uh, uh, diagram which i am drawing right now can anyone tell me why i am representing these res, uh, you know these with boxes now like instead of drawing uh, resistances so it can be any circuit can be anything yeah so if i write uh, this one as z1 j omega then it means that it can be a series combination parallel combination of resistance inductance resistance capacitance inductance capacitance or inductance resistance and capacitance so it can represent any any combination of series or parallel combination of these three elements so that's why we represent it by a box with a with a z1 in the bracket z omega and uh, here you have z2 z omega and note that now i am representing all these things with the phasors so this is bold i and this is now bold v and recall that why i am writing it like this because we are not transformed into frequency domain from the time domain circuit so we have transformed our circuit from time domain to frequency domain that's why we have bold v and bold i representing these uh, you know uh, currents and voltages and if i want to calculate z in j omega what will be the value can anyone tell me if i want to calculate z in j omega here what will be the answer addition z1 plus z2 j omega yeah so it right actually it is bold v by bold i which is nothing but z1 j omega plus z2 j omega so this is the summation it's very simple right so it's two resistances or it's basically two impedances in series and so whatever concepts that you have uh, for series resistances the same concepts will apply for the impedances also so there is no uh, you know uh, uh, problem in that uh, please mute your mic sir have you started the recording ah uh, yeah recording is started just checking it yeah it is already on okay so 
so this is basically the uh, uh, series resistance and then if I want to calculate mod i what will be that answer can anyone tell me if I want to calculate this bold i what will be the answer v by z in v by z in right so it's very simple v by z in and z in is this one so z1 j omega plus z2 j omega and if I want to calculate let us say this bold v2 this is let us say v2 and this is let us say bold v1 what will be the answer for v2 z2 j omega into bold i z2 j omega into bold i and what is i you have to v upon z1 v upon z1 plus z so it is z1 j omega plus z2 j omega and then in terms of voltages normally we write so this is the expression right so i guess there is no uh, uh, problem in understanding these equation in case if you have let me know otherwise this is straightforward right and similarly if you want to write for v1 it will be what it will be here you will replace it by 1 and here also you will replace it by 1 this side and rest of, rest of it will remain same so this is voltage divider rule sir yes it's a voltage divider rule so now if i generalize then it is like you know v i i can write here and then i can write i over here so it's a generalized expression now valid for any voltages which you apply right if, if you have more than three if you have more than two impedances you can straight away write the voltage across them using this generalized rule and uh, summation of all bold v i's is equal to the capital v uh, so bold v which we have from uh, this side so this is very simple right so it's all uh, series combinations and uh, their relevant uh, you know expressions that we have so so in case of resistances also this is valid in case of generalized uh, these expressions with have impedances here is also the same expressions same expressions will be valid so now if you have you know similarly if you have uh, something like this where you have uh, things in parallel so it is better to you know write it in terms of uh, the admittances because it is e it ease out the job you can do it in case of uh, uh, using the impedances also so there is no uh, uh, no one is stopping you on that but if you replace the parallel combinations by the corresponding admittances then things become pretty simple so if you have bold i in here and this is your bold v in this side and this is uh, your currents which are flowing here bold i1 and bold i2 so now you can easily see that the if you want to calculate the uh, y1 bold j omega what will be the answer here if i want to calculate this y1 bold j omega or rather y in sorry this is y in what will be the answer? y1 plus y2 so it will be y1 j omega plus y2 j omega so so this is uh, like you know that's why we are trying to write all the elements that are connected in parallel in the form of admittances because uh, it follows this series addition so that's why it's easy to do it and if you want to calculate the currents which are you know flowing in these branches it will be what it will be y i j omega over y 1 j omega plus y 2 j omega times i bold i and i am writing i here because you can see now if you want to calculate for branch 1 it will be y 1 divided by this and if i want to calculate for branch 2 it will be y 2 and y 2 this side uh, sorry i 2 here and y 2 this side so i hope that there should be no doubts here but in case if you have you can let me know and you can replace this also right you can replace this expression by the corresponding uh, uh, z uh, z values so it will be actually if you want to calculate i1 then it will be z2 here here you will get z2 j omega over z1 j omega plus z2 j omega 
and if you want to calculate I2 then you will have Z1 here so it's different so if you have any questions related to this you can ask me uh, so yes so my network was uh, like my connection was poor so that's why I was not able to connect uh, but in the previous slide can you like explain me briefly what happened in the previous slide okay this one is okay right yeah this one is okay. okay so here what we are trying to do is you know we are trying to see the different combinations like you know in this case you have two impedances in parallel so we derived these uh, expressions which are very similar to if you have a simple resistances here in parallel so same same will apply to the impedances this is what i was telling here in this slide and in this slide what we are telling is like you know if in case of resistances which were in series last time if in case of that we have these uh, impedances then what is the corresponding voltages across these impedances which we are having here that is v1 and v2 and what is the current which is flowing and what is the input impedance that we have for this this particular circuit so these are the expressions related to that that's what we were doing and if you recall this is nothing you know very remarkable here because everything is same uh, as it is in case of resistances so you can easily replace these by resistances also like r1 plus r2 and you can calculate the voltages also if if these impedances are replaced by the corresponding resistances but if it is not then also same voltage division will happen in case of ac impedances also that's what i was discussing okay so so let's uh, do some simple questions today and uh, get some confidence on these type of questions like what we, what kind of questions will come in exams and wh what kind of questions you can expect and how to solve all these type of questions so if you have a question something like this let us say so please have your calculators in your hand so that you can easily calculate these values so if you have something like this So uh, in this question, this is the inductor as you can see, its value is 5 millihenries, 0.4 millifarad capacitor, then you have 0.2 millifarad capacitor, then 10 ohm resistance and what is this actually, can anyone tell me, like if I am writing this in a box, what that it is represents? combination, equivalent resistance. So what is the combination, what is the element inside this, can anyone tell? If I am writing 10 plus J10. The 10 ohm resistor and 10 ohm capacitor in 10 millifarad capacitor in series. No, it's not capacitor. Can you, can you, uh, you know? So it's not capacitor. It's basically inductance. If you see here, normally, if you have something like this, right? What you will do? You will write R. And what is the inductance of the? Uh, of of the? Uh, what is the uh, impedance of the inductance? j omega l right yes sir so what is this r plus j omega l so if you compare this with this what is the answer the inductance value is, is 10 divided inductor. by omega and omega value is given in this question as 500 radians per second so if omega is given to you you can easily calculate the inductance from here and the important thing is it's basically a series combination of resistance and inductance as you can see from here but in case you have you know a, a capacitance like this and you know the capacitance is 1 by j omega c and this is r then series combination is r plus 1 by j omega c which can be written as r minus j by omega c okay or not can we do it Can yes, we do sir. this thing or not? Any any questions here if I can write like this or not? Okay, so if you are all comfortable with this, 
then r minus j by omega c so you can see minus term is coming so there is no minus term here so uh, it will not be a capacitor so here it's a combination of r and inductance okay and how about this one what is this is it the is it is it is it inductance or admittance sorry uh, it's, admittance. it's a admittance or a or a impedance admittance why admittance. why it is admittance sir because it is in siemens right because i have written it in s so it means it's an admittance please note that the in units are siemens so that's why okay so if i want to calculate the input impedance of this circuit let me know the answer now you solve it and give it to me what is the answer this is the one this is the circuit and the omega is given to you as 500 radians per second i will give you 5 minutes uh, to solve this sir what sir what we need to find out impedance this okay, one sir. z in j omega Sir, is answer seventeen point five? no, no, it's not seventeen point five. It will be something. So you are getting only seventeen point five. No, it's not that. It will combine. It will have a combination of, you know, a real part and imaginary part. It will not be a simple real number. Okay. So until unless it cancels out with the. imaginary part it there may be a chance i am not saying it will not be but right now for this answer it has both real and imaginary so let me solve for you people just to give you a start so that in the so can morning, you give us one minute we can solve okay it. okay sir yes yes 0.45 plus j 1.097 ah uh, no it's not so let me do it for you people and you can cross check at your home whether the answer is right or not and then you can you know let me know in the next class in case if we if we have done some errors uh, while calculating so let me say that you know this thing is z1 let us say and uh, this particular thing has z2 j omega this is z1 j omega and this one has let us say we call this as z3 j omega so now if i write it like this can anyone tell me what is the z in j omega in terms of all these green quantities which i have written sir z1 and z2 in parallel and then series with z3 z1 and z2 in parallel z1 to z2 plus z3 would be yes. answer because z2 will, will not be in parallel or also yes right so here you have z1 and then you have again z2 this is z1 and this is z3 so all these are in series right so 
so this all combination in terms of the green values will be in series so now we will calculate z1 individually so so z1 has a inductance and a capacitance so what will be the answer if i want to write in terms of generalized expressions for inductance omega and capacitance j minus 1 upon j omega c right so it will be this right everyone agrees with this sir minus would not no minus not because j is in the denominator right now recall yes. in case of earlier yes, sir, thing yes. right so right now j is in the denominator so that's why minus is not there so now you can write it like this so you can take common so it will be this it will be 2.5j Minus two point five J. So the answer is minus two point five J. This is that one. Yeah, I did not understand. Which one? Which portion you didn't understand? Uh, sir, how J came upside? Oh, In that one J is just you know you multiply it by J and divide it by J. So if both of these things you do, then J dot J is minus one, right? J is complex number, huh? So you have this J, right? So you multiply by J and you you know you in the numerator also you can do it right so this this cancels out again you will have to do by j so that's why this portion is minus 1 sir can you once again explain that which two combinations you have to do which two combinations you take like uh, i i didn't get you like which combinations you are saying okay okay got it sir okay okay okay, okay. okay. Okay, so Z one G omega is minus two point five J. Okay, now we come back to this part, this Z two G omega. So Z two G omega has two combinations, right? One is this side, another one is this side, right? So if I want to write for this part, what will be the answer? If I want to write for this part only, what will be the answer? Twenty plus. Twenty plus J ten. Everybody will agree with this, okay? Yes. I'm now one thing you notice that this is in parallel with this. So I I told you that it's better to write it in terms of admittances. So if I write this one as an admittance, how will I write? I will write it by doing inverse of this. Yes, sir. And then for capacitance, how will I write? I will write it as J omega C. Minus J omega C. Why minus J omega C? One by J omega C is the inductive capacitance, right? So if I write it in terms of the impedance of this Y C J omega, it will be J omega C or not? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Sir. Right. So it's J omega C. Note that it's very important. You have to be comfortable with all these things. So the more you will practice, the more comfortable you will become. So once you put these values. Ah, uh, here, what you will get answer as? First of all, tell me what what this will be. Is, is it Z or Y? Y. Y two. Y. Yes, it's good. Yeah. So it's Y two actually. Y two J omega. Not anything else. It's Y two. It it's not Y two itself. It's Y two in the brackets J omega. So this answer once you do that, once you calculate. Its value will be actually 0.04 plus J 0.08 if you calculate this. So once you do that, you will get this answer. And if you want to calculate the impedance out of this, what will be the answer? One upon this particular you know expression that you have here. So once you once you calculate that, its value will be uh, minus, minus J 10 omega. This will be the answer for Z two. So, so students who have this calculator in their hand, they can do it now also because uh, then it will be more better actually. But in case if you do not have, you can do it offline and cross check. Sir, can we apply uh, means that what we use as in uh, um, sum of means parallel resistance? Can we use yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, we can use everything. Uh, whatever concepts we have from our resistances, because you can see here, right? There is one resistance. Let us say here, and then there is one resistance, and then there is one resistance. So you add these two resistances and then do a parallelism. Okay. But now, instead of resistances, it's capacitance. So you have to be careful. Okay. 
सर आई जस्ट वांट टू क्रॉस चेक द आंसर आंसर इज 10 माइनस 7.5 जे ना नो 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 आंसर इज 5 माइनस जे 10 5 माइनस जे 10 नहीं सर आई एम आस्किंग फॉर ओवरऑल जे 1 प्लस जे ओके ओके व्हाट इज द आंसर 10 माइनस जे 7.5 जे यस गुड इट्स 10 माइनस जे 7.5 यस सर या सो दिस इज दिस इज एक्चुअली जे 2 व्हिच वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड फॉर दिस ब्रांच okay now comes the third one which is over here and now you can see which representation it is can anyone tell me what is what is this representation polar 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 perfect yes. polar and why omega is not given because omega is same for all of this circuit that's why omega is omitted from here that 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 this is the reason why we omit omega in the polar representation because it is constant throughout so whatever currents and the voltages that you will get here if you want to calculate them all of them will have omega as one omega as the frequency so that's why we omit this in the representations so coming back to this circuit this is the polar representation if you want to uh, you know uh, write this so how will you write this expression like will you write it in terms of admittance or in terms of uh, impedances admittance so if you write in terms of admittance then it is y3 j omega as root of 0.02 e j pi by 4 and then what will have what will have for here this thing can anyone tell me how will you write this 1 upon omega l so it so j omega c 1 upon j y c it's it's inductance right uh, sorry sir 1 upon j uh, omega l right j omega l everyone is okay with this yes sir. and we can do that same trick right we can multiply and divide by j so what you get here is write this or not yes sir okay so this is the this is the one that you have here so uh, now if you if you see this particular expression you can either do two things either you convert this particular uh, expression into polar format or you can convert this one into cartesian format and solve so either way you can do it depends on your choice whether you want to convert this one into cartesian or this one sorry this one into polar and then do this but but if you do this into polar it's difficult to subtract actually so it's better to convert this into cartesian format first and then take the real part separate and the imaginary part separate and once you do this your answer will come out to be 0.1 minus j.1 this is y3 j omega so i hope you can understand right if you can convert this if you convert this into polar format it's difficult to subtract the polar quantities if you recall i told you last time if there is an addition subtraction it's better to do it in cartesian format or rectangular format but if it is if it is division and multiplication then it's better to go for polar format so you can recall from my earlier advice which i had given you last time so you convert this into cartesian format and then you do it then you subtract it from the from this factor and what you will get is this as the answer and the corresponding z3 j omega will now be 5 plus j5 omega so you just invert this to get this answer so now you know z in is nothing but z1 plus z2 plus z3 so if you add all these impedances which we have calculated your answer will be actually 10 minus j times 7.5 omega and you can write it in terms of polar formats also and its value will be 36.87 degrees so you have to be comfortable with both because in the in the questions it might be you know the answer options might be in this way or in this way so you you should know how to do it so any any questions here related to this particular exercise so y3 can you explain again y3 this one yes okay so this one is like you know as you can see that this is this is in parallel with this so uh, as i told you that impedance uh, uh, you know y y admittance is the best format for doing it and also you have this one given in the format of admittance only because the units are siemens so you can take this plus 
and you know the impedance of the impedance of the inductance is basically j omega l so the corresponding admittance of this inductance will be 1 by j omega l so it is nothing but minus j by omega l and then you know that these two admittances will be adding in parallel as we had done in the exercise before then what you can do is you can add this one and this one together so if you add these two together what you get is this and you can now convert this into rectangular coordinates because last time i had done a lot of exercises based on that so it's very easy to convert so what you will get answer as a plus jb let us say so this jb component will be added subtracted from this j component and whatever answer that you will get is this one 0.1 minus j 0.1 and then you have to invert it to get back the impedance okay understood yes sir. so so once you have this z in which is the summation of all these this is the answer so in, so this is uh, one type of questions that you might see in your exams so uh, so this actually gives you a flavor of how to do additions and subtractions of the additions or you know multiplications of the corresponding impedances when they are in parallel or in series so let us do some more questions today and see sir, yes one minute. yeah sir, have you on recording have you turned on recording yeah recording is i think it's already going on just a bit yeah it's already there okay okay Okay. okay so now uh, let us solve this question so this is the question and you can recall now that earlier you had uh, you know uh questions uh, in your last exams uh, you were solving questions without the capacitances and inductance but now since ac has uh, you know there now uh, you you will you will see some variations in these circuits by incorporating the capacitance and inductances also so you have to be comfortable now in solving questions based on uh, these combinations like c l and all that but the the good news is that the uh, concepts which you have studied earlier will all be you know same here also so there will be no changes so so what i want from here is i want to calculate the input impedance here that is z in j omega input impedance by looking in through this terminal so if i want to uh, do a calculation for that you all know that in, if i want to calculate the input impedance z in j omega then what i will do is i will apply uh, actually a battery i will apply a battery okay and that battery has you know let us say a mod v please note that right now we are working in phasers so as you can see now we are changing to the frequency domain so uh, this is mod v now and the current which is flowing here is capital mod i which is again in phasor and resistances value will remain same if you recall uh, resistances will remain same and the only difference that will come now is that c will be replaced by what will it be replaced by minus j uh, j by omega c you can do that also but i normally write like this so 1 by j <laughs> omega c okay so so this particular representation now is in phasor format phasor format that is important right or in frequency domain you are actually representing the circuit earlier representation was in time domain format so this is phasor format and whatever node voltages that you will write for solving these questions will also be written in terms of volt v so let us say this particular node voltage it will be i am calling it as volt v1 this one also as volt v2 or not v2 let us say x here and this one also as volt v2 so the important point that has to be kept in mind is all the voltages and currents that will be flowing here whatever way, whatever they be will be all bold v's and i's which actually is nothing but they are the phasors actually in polar format so that has to be kept in mind so now uh, i'll give you uh, you know let us say you know c 
five six minutes to solve this question and i am hopeful that you will be able to solve it let me know what will be the answer z in j omega will be nothing but it will be mod v by mod i sorry not mod bold bold v by bold i so calculate this and get me the answer for this We have to calculate uh, Z in. Yes, you have to calculate the impedance. Sir, so this voltage source, is it AC source? Hona chahiye na? Yes, it will be an AC source. Okay, sir. Uh, so to be precise, it has to be like this. So can anyone answer like if it is a DC let us say then uh, how will it change like you know if I apply DC here what will happen can just for a quick you know a sort of question like if I apply DC only plus V and if I ask you to solve it through the concepts which we had learned in our earlier lectures then what will be the in change? case of in case of capacitor wo j nikal jayega right so uh, no no so the j nikal jayega means then what will happen to this capacitor wo hum xc open branch ho jayega open circuit open circuit, open circuit. it will be open, open circuit. circuit because 1 by j dc value has 0 c right so omega is 0 so 1 by 0 is anything but infinity infinity means it's an open circuit so it will open out so this will not be there in case you apply with DC voltage but right now it's AC so it will be there Sir, can I say answer? Yes, yes. Minus 2R plus G upon omega C. Minus, uh, just a second, minus 2R plus G upon omega C. No, 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 it's not the answer. Sir, yes. is it R square divided by minus R plus R omega C minus J? No, 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 not that big. It's a very simple expression. Sir, one minute. One. Yeah. Sir, is it J R square omega C? J R square, yes, good. This is the answer. J R square omega C. So, the impedance Z in is J R square omega C. So let me solve this question for you people so that uh, you will get to know how this answer came. So uh, let us call this as V in rather than cap mod V, uh, you know, bold V just to you know represent that this is the input signal and the input current so can anyone tell me what this voltage is vx if i am writing it as vx what this will be v same as v in v v right so it will be v in right so i hope everyone will be comfortable with what i am saying in case if you have any doubts you can ask but this is v in so this is important right so this is one of the things now uh, what I will do is I will actually write nodal analysis at different points. So uh, that nodal analysis can be written at node A here first and then I can write it at node B and can I write somewhere else also out of these like where I can write can I write here no sir and how no, about sir. this point no sir. No sir, but uh, you can write here. R and capacitor. Yes sir. Okay, so this is we are calling it as C. Okay, 
so if i write sir, yes formula non inverting amplifier sorry for that uh, what we find out of non inverting amplifier can we use that formula here directly uh we ask for one plus r two by r can be can be can be used yeah but uh, i don't know whether you know this will create a problem or not because this is also connected right earlier in case of non inverting amplifiers this is not connected this is directly connected to the voltage source it's not connected to some other part so i think i think it will not be possible to do that here try to see but in case sorry result of both is coming same same it's coming With okay it. then it's okay so also it was same answer okay and you can use it you can use that result also intermediate result as i was you know we discussed uh, these concepts earlier where we you know uh, you know uh, saw that whether you know we can write the already existing uh, you know amplifiers if we know that amplifier we can write away their v out by v in and you know pass that values to the unknown circuits and solve it there so in case if you are able to do it it's good but i am doing it from scratch here so if i write a nodal analysis at node a at node a if i write so will you all agree that the equation will be this if if you do not agree let me know this is the equation when i write it for node a all of you agree with this yes sir yes so sir. node yes, a sir. is nothing but it is uh, though it is node a but the voltage here is v in actually so we can write it like this for node b if i want to write can i write like this for node b yes sir any any questions here if anyone has any doubts he can or yes, she sir. can ask yes, no problem in that so in case if you have any doubts you can ask right so this is basically v in so what we are doing v in then we are summing up the currents which are flowing from this node so this is v in divided by r then v in divided by r this side so that's why 2 is coming then minus v in divided by r and then v2 divided by r this one so what we are basically doing is we are actually summing up the currents flowing out of this node v in which is the node b which we are calling so if you see this it's basically that in case if you have any doubts still you can ask me just now also otherwise you know if you are if you will be still in doubt it will continuously remain in doubt and you will not be able to solve these questions later on okay for node c for node c you can write it as v in 1 over r plus j omega c minus v1 j omega c equal to 0 how many of you can write this and how many of you can say that this is right is it okay yes sir yes sir so i don't you not I able to yes, understand sir. okay sir can you explain that node c yeah, yes sir let's explain it explain okay so let us say you know instead of this uh, let me draw it here so this is basically plus minus this is r this is let us say you know instead of c you if you are feeling uncomfortable in that you can write it as let us say z okay and uh, we do not know what that z is but we will see it what that is so this is v in here okay so so what i said is uh, we will apply nodal analysis at this point so if you apply nodal analysis you have to you know sum up the currents leaving this node so sum of the currents leaving this node is what v in minus v1 divided by z plus v in divided by r equal to 0 hoga nahi hoga will it be or not yes sir so yes, you sir. can you can collect the v in terms so what is this right 
Any questions here? No, sir. And then, no, what sir. is Z? Z is 1 by J omega C. So, if Z, Z is 1 by J omega yes. C, then you can write it like this, right? Okay? Okay, okay sir. So, I same got. thing is this one. So, um, in case if you still feel, you know, uh, uh, difficulty in understanding, what you can do is, uh, you can replace it by, you know, this impedance and you can assume that it's a sort of resistance and solve it through the concepts of resistance by using this impedance and then replace this impedance by the actual value later on. And once you get comfortable with these type of circuits, then you will automatically will be able to do it. Then there is no need of doing this cross substitution to understand it. So, so this is done. So what you can do now is, uh, so we have, uh, so we can, you know, calculate this V1 out of here. So V1 is nothing but V in 1 by R plus J omega C divided by J omega C. So this is V1 which you have calculated from this expression. Now what you can do is you can actually put this V1, this V1 which you have here into this V1 which is over here. Just the substitutions now. So it's all substitution game. So now you have to put this V1 back into this expression and what you will get is V2 in terms of V in. So once you get V2 in terms of V in, then what you can do is you can, uh, the important thing is this V1 is already written in terms of V in. So this expression will always be having two terms. One is V in term, another one is V2 term. So now you will represent V2 in terms of V in. So once you do that, what you will get answer? You will get V2 as V in j omega c minus 1 by r divided by j omega c. So this is what you will get once you substitute this v1 into this expression to get the value of v2 in terms of v. So this is the answer that you will get. Now you substitute this v2 back into this expression, the first one. Why we want to substitute this? Because we want to calculate v in by i in which is z j omega. That's why we are going back to the original equation. So once you have this V2, you substitute it back into this V2. And once you do that, the answer that you will get is now J omega C R square. This is the answer. You can cross check later on in case if you are not able to solve it now. But this is, this is, the, this is the way that you have to solve these type of questions. Any any questions here? Any questions? If you have any questions, let me know. I will I will address it. No problem in that. Sir, the final answer is final answer is this one, right? J omega C R square. J omega C R square. So Z in J omega is J omega C R square. That is the final answer. Okay, so if everyone is comfortable with this, we will go further to some other questions. Okay. So, sir, as a pure alagi circuit, ata, so, just say, yah, starting wala jo part tha circuit ka, usme hum aisa non inverting ka laga sakte hai, ya fir usse better hum scratch se hi chalo. Ah, dekho, it depends. Like you know, uh, as one of the students is saying, we can use the concept of non inverting also, but it's better to go from scratch until unless you you see completely. Independent circuits like agar lo ye nahi hota, let us say if it is not there. Let us say it's not there, right? Then then you can uh, still you can go with that idea where you know uh, you have uh, these independent blocks and then you can you know cascade them and get the answer as we were doing last time. But let us say if you have something like this now, let us say you have this Rx, then what will happen? Then you cannot apply. Amen. Then you cannot yes. apply. Okay. Then everything will change. Then you cannot use these cascading concepts which I was telling you. If you remember the earlier questions where we were doing it, there was no interaction of first stage to the second stage through some inputs. There was no interaction. Only outputs were interacting with the inputs of the second stage. 
that that is output of this was interacting with the input of the second stage but there was no interaction of the inputs to the outputs so uh, that is the that is the thing here there are there is there is two way interaction going on output is also interacting with input and this circuit input is also interacting with uh, this input of this op amp through this rx so then you cannot do that okay so you have to see cleverly that whether you can use the already existing results in calculating the final results or not okay so so let us say you have this question now here you have uh, a current which is ist which is uh, cos 100t then you have uh, this 10 ohm resistance then we have this inductance which is 0.1 henry and uh, then we have this here which is uh, 2 i l as a function of t then we have 10 ohms and then we have a capacitor which is 1 millifarad and the capacitor voltage is vct let us say and what we are trying to calculate now in this particular uh, question is this vct this one we want to calculate this vct and we are given this circuit to us and the ilt is this this is ilt so now i will explain you one thing here and then you will solve yourself this particular question so this is basically the uh, time frequent uh, time time uh, you know and a time uh, view of the circuit so you can see here we have time t involved here and we have time t involved here so this is the time domain representation of the circuit this is the time domain representation of the circuit so we will calculate the we will draw the phasor domain representation which is the frequency domain representation of the circuit so what we will do we will do nothing but we will just copy this first we will copy this and we will paste it here so okay so now if i want to represent the phasor domain of this how will i represent it for this current source can anyone tell me for this current source what will be the representation here in terms of phasor horizontal line sorry sir it would be bold i no bold i will be there but what is the value of that bold i sir it will be 1 and anything else no sir nothing it will be First actually 1 and 0, zero. Yes, you can sir. write it like that okay so uh, any problems in understanding this like why we are writing this with this no sir okay so this is basically bold i rather what we were saying bold i is equal to one angle zero this is this will remain same okay what about this point one henry how will i represent it what will be this sir it will be 10 j it will be tan j and that is nothing but j omega l it's basically j omega l and omega is 100 given to you so you will write 100 times 0.1 henry so what is the answer that is tan j so it will be tan j so everybody is comfortable with this then i will remove it and i will write it as j times 10 okay this is j10 how about this particular thing how will i write this i will write it as like this just to show that it's a function of frequency okay il j omega Similarly, we can write this also as because it is dependent on this, right? If I change this, this is also changed. And here, VCT will be replaced by bold VC J omega. Minus. And what will be the answer for C here? 
माइनस जे टेन 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 सो वॉट यू आर डूइंग इज वन बाई जे ओमेगा सी सो वन बाई जे ओमेगा इज हंड्रेड एंड सी इज वन मिली फेरेट सो इट्स बेसिकली माइनस जे टेन Sir, what we have to find in this circuit? We have to find V C J omega. This one. Oh. So this is the frequency domain representation. This is frequency domain representation of the time domain circuit which is given over here. So now let me know what is the answer for V C J omega. It is actually very simple question because you have already done so many. questions based on this type of uh, you know circuit which involve only resistances minus j so your answer is minus, minus j. j okay in terms of the polar format if you want to well uh, write it what will be the answer if i write in polar format It will be one angle minus ninety or not? Yes, sir. Right. So and so the answer is right actually. This is minus j. The voltage which we calculate for the capacitor, its value is minus j. So let me quickly solve this so that everyone will understand how we have calculated it, and then we will finish this class. And in the next class, I will also solve some more questions. Let me copy it here. So, if I want to calculate V C J omega, will you all agree that V C J omega is nothing but it's the it's this. Will you all agree that this is this one? Answer. Yes sir. yes sir so it's basically a voltage divider right so you have one resistance and you have one uh, again one impedance which is minus j10 and you want to calculate the voltage across this and we have already calculated in our earlier when we started this lecture that if you have two impedances z1 and z2 in series and if you want to calculate the voltage across this z2 you can do it easily by this uh, this is the impedance where we are looking for the voltage across it Divide by the total sum of the impedances, which is 10 omega minus J10. So this is the one. And what is the total voltage? Total voltage is this 2 I L J omega, which is the controlling voltage, which is given over here. So this is the V C J omega. Now, in order to calculate V C J omega, you want to know the value of I L J omega. So I L J omega, how will you calculate? I L J omega is nothing but it's very easy, right? It's 10 ohms. Divide by 10 ohms plus J10 times one angle zero. Will it be or not? Yes, sir. So basically, it's current division in the two parallel resistances. So you recall our uh, earlier slides where we discussed that you have two impedances in parallel. Then you can calculate the corresponding currents here. I1, I2 easily, right? that this is very simple so the current in the inductance here will be this resistance divided by the resistance plus the inductance times the total current which is here one angle zero so if you calculate this answer its value will be uh, basically 1 by root 2 angle minus 45 degree and once you substitute this value which is this one into this expression what you will get is very simple answer you will get uh, one angle minus 90 degrees as the final answer vcg omega so if i want if if i ask you that if i want to write it in terms of the time domain who will tell me the answer for this if i want to write the time domain counterpart of this that is vct if i want to write vct how will i write it can anyone tell me we one have cos We minus have, we have this right so if i write vct what will that be one cos 
Okay, one so cos t minus ninety. Thirty. Ninety, ninety, nine zero. No, no. So it would be in sine one hundred t. Hmm. Yeah, that is okay. But in terms of cos, because if you remember, I told you that most of the signals that we will be writing out it in terms of cos, right? Hundred t minus ninety. Yeah, it will be hundred t minus ninety degree. Right or not? So basically, yes, what you are doing is you are actually taking the real part of this one angle minus ninety degrees, because you know this is nothing but one e minus j ninety degrees, right? So, so that has a real and the this particular Euler expression has both cos and sines, right? So once we apply the real operation on this, if you recall in my earlier lecture, I was writing this real operation onto this polar expression. So because this euler has both cos and sin so once you operate real on this particular thing you will get back the cos answer and this is 100 uh, because you have you know uh, you you have uh, 100 as the input signal omega is 100 and it will remain constant throughout this signal circuit so if it remains constant throughout the circuit all the ils and all the vcs and all the Currents in this branches and all the voltages will have the same frequency omega. So that's why we can straight away write omega here as 100 t, and this minus 90 is coming because of the calculation that we were doing, because all these will go change in the phase value rather than the frequency value. Frequency will remain same, phase will change as depending upon where you are calculating the. Voltages. If you are calculating the voltage across the capacitor, here phase will be different. If you calculate the voltage here, phase will be different. So the phase thing is captured in this polar representation. So that's why we have minus 90 straight away from this. We we calculated it and 100 we wrote straight away. Any any questions related to this question? Anyone? If anyone has any doubts, he can ask me. okay so if there are no doubts it's good I, and i think now you people are getting comfortable in solving these questions but do not worry in the next uh, class we will again solve four or five more questions so that you will gain more insights into it and in case the students are not able to you know solve these questions right now here in the class they can do it at home solve it and uh, you know discuss with your friends and uh, see if you are getting the right answers or not Sir, I have a small doubt. Yes. Sir, I didn't understand that last part. Like how that uh, cos hundred t minus ninety came. How that cos hundred t is coming? Is that what you are asking? No, no, sir. Yes, uh, this. Uh, when you converted in time domain, like one angle night minus ninety degree to time domain. Okay, you want to know that, right? Okay, so this is nothing but you know. Uh, you can represent it in terms of uh, the polar expression like this or not this we already discussed right and yes sir. so this one is uh, if you represent in euler format it will be cos of you know it will have cos of phi plus j sin phi will it be or not for this particular yes sir. but if you want to extract the cosine component because i told you last time that we are actually working with cosine signals and if you see here also we have uh, cosine signal only right there is no sine signal involved right and there is no complex signal involved to be precise there is no complex signal here so it's not like i am exciting it with uh, you know something like this i am not doing that right i am not doing this i am only taking the cosine part so if i am taking only the cosine part then what i will do is i will extract that part by operating a real function on cos phi plus J sine phi. So if I operate a real onto this, I will get back cos phi. And if I operate IMG on cos phi plus J sine phi, I will get sine phi out. Okay. So okay. Yes. So that's why we can easily write sir, this expression. Yes. Yeah. Sir, I had a doubt. Like uh, we give values to impedances like in a uh, complex number form. So. Uh, Is there any practical, uh, like, in practical use, uh, how the values of impedances are given, like in 
complex number or only a value that we uh, that mod only can you repeat your question i i didn't get you properly actually sir for example uh, the value of an impedance is 1 plus iota okay but in uh, that is uh, like if we consider that in ideal case but in real case uh, we, uh, like uh, if i want to use an impedance then uh, like can i say uh, give me an impedance of this value 1 plus iota or uh, no that will not be a case because there will be some you know what happens is uh, i'll tell you this what happens is normally these capacitances are we assume them that they are ideal you know we assume that their values are exactly j omega c but it's not like that once you once you fabricate these rest capacitances what happens is they have some small uh, small resistance also with them and there are some other parasitic inductances also along with this actual c i am forgetting what that model is but uh, what happens is you have c along with that a very small r a very small r so effectively you know the capacitance in b xc is not 1 by j omega c practically what i am saying but it is 1 j omega c plus 1 by r inverse so normally uh, you know once you apply uh, you know once you measure this capacitance its value will be this and this r which is small r is very you know it's basically sorry here it's very high actually in this case uh, the thing is i am not drawing the exact model because i do not know what that model is but i am telling you the practical thing that you will have some intrinsic resistances and capacitances right now i'm writing it as high because if you write one by high here so it will be close to zero but this is not the exact model please note i'm just drawing it for your intuition like i'm drawing it for making you understand that the actual capacitance will have some resistances and some parasitic things which will lower the value of c that's why you will not get exactly one by j you will get something like point z point nine one two j something like that so that's my doubt uh, sir my doubt was like uh, 0.912j so how uh, like can we get that value uh, uh, right resistor of that value no 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 it, uh, that's the problem actually that's why this approximation comes into play so what happens is you know uh, engineering like you know you are into uh, now uh, engineering studies right you are uh, you are learning so many engineering subjects so there is one important concept which we call as approximation so things are not the way which we feel like you know there is a lot of randomness in the environment so we want to solve these uh, practical problems but we cannot incorporate all these randomness of the environment into our you know uh, you know theory so what we do is we approximate our you know environment by a simplistic version so that we can solve it and get a little bit closer answer to what actually it will be if we incorporate this resistances so what we do is we approximate you know somewhere like if you have something like this uh, like say so what we say is let us call this as 1 plus j rather than 0.998j because we will not be able to calculate these intrinsic uh, you know elements along with the capacitor okay so this is basically approximation which is the backbone of engineering actually so wherever you will go uh, you know you will approximate the things to solve for uh, you know to solve for and get the answer which is closest to the actual answer but it will not be the exact answer it will be closest because you have calculated the approximated answer and this is the actual answer which you cannot get because you do not know the values of these intrinsic values okay okay sir thank you sir okay okay then i think uh, our time is over in the next class we will discuss more numericals and uh, please solve these questions if you are having any doubt uh, discuss with your friends and, and then we will solve some more numericals on this thank you sir please uh, yeah send uh, lecture 17 note okay, okay. yeah yeah i'll do that i'll do that okay thank you okay.